President of the United States. Uh, you all may be seated if you like. Uh, Mr. President, we're here today to maintain your majority on the Civil Aeronautics Board. As you know, uh, you made it a majority last January with a member who's now on her way back from Italy from negotiations, but we have our other woman member, Gloria Schaefer, is with us today, and we're about to get uh, another one, and we're, I'm just tickled about it to have such fine help. You know, uh, Barbara McConnell came to our attention and your attention because of her commitment and dedication uh, to you and your programs and your commitment on deregulation. And uh, for the past 16 months, I've had the opportunity to watch her grapple and grow with complex issues as she, with her lawyer mind, could just knife right through and make complex issues simple. I've also found her to have a fine sense of humor, bright eyes that just have contagious enthusiasm, and some real balanced judgment. Uh, I've noticed that she she has the eyes of her father, or the nose of her mother, and a mind of her own. <laughs> and uh, she has a terrific background as she starts this job, and uh, I think one of the most knowledgeable people that ever been sworn in as a member of the Civil Aeronautics Board. She comes from a very close family, or has a large uh, group of brothers and sister, and uh, when her father died, uh, she started an occupation that I think uh, you'll probably find helpful to you out in your ranch when you leave here in about uh, five years or so. Uh, and that's being a wrangler. She took horses and uh, <laughs> she, learned, she learned how to break horses and uh, how, to, uh, how to ride and uh, get people's ride and earn enough money to help put her four brothers through college in the process. And then she went on herself through Arizona State University and uh, got her uh, bachelor's degree and her master's degree and then went on and uh, got a lawyer's credential and uh, through a lot of hard work and then for four years Barbara went to uh, Greyhound Corporation located there in Phoenix, Arizona and then after that she went on as, a, as an attorney and then after that she went on as the assistant secretary and associate general counsel of one of the Fortune 500 companies, the Southwest Forest Industries. She also served on the uh, uh, board at the Phoenix Airport that supervises that airport and two other satellite airports and in 1969 incidentally was named an outstanding young woman of America. She's certainly been a key asset to me Mr. President and at 32 she's going to be the youngest member ever on the Civil Aeronautics Board. She's had a lot of experience now in the last 16 months in international negotiations, the Essential Air Service Program, creating additional competition in the travel agent industry, working on computer reservation bias systems, and legislation to sunset the Civil Aeronautics Board, as you know we're going to do next year. And perhaps most recently, when you wrote me a letter asking for retaliatory action against the Soviet Union for their brutal attack on Korean Airlines Flight 007, Barbara was one of the key members of our staff that worked on uh, getting all the paperwork done to, to meet with your desires. And uh, this is a critical period in the history of the Civil Aeronautics Board. We need a lot of talent to close it down. And I'm just delighted to have Barbara with us. You know, uh, when you, Mr. President, announced that she was going to be on the CAB uh, August 26th in my hometown of San Diego, uh, it was quite an announcement. But uh, since then, it's pretty been much a woman's show. Senator Nancy Kassebaum chaired her hearings. And today we have uh, Transportation Secretary Elizabeth Dole to hold the Bible and Justice Sandra O'Connor to swear in. And with that, Mr. President, uh, we'd certainly like you to make a few comments if you'd like to. So, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. All right, and thank you very much. Our honoree who is here today, Justice O'Connor, Secretary Dole, I, uh, you, Dan, with your words, uh, you've kind of aroused a lot of deja vu and so forth. I didn't know about the horse background here, <laughs> and uh, now winding up uh, with things to do with airplanes, makes me think. I was a reserve officer in the horse cavalry and wound up in World War II flying a desk for the Air Force. <laughs> uh, I, uh, and the whole administration is touched. Tomorrow we'll have a cabinet secretary out riding in the Rodeo. And uh, when I called him to ask Mac Baldridge to be Secretary of Commerce, I got his wife instead and she said he couldn't come to the phone. He was in a calf roping contest. 
So, well, I'd say welcome to the team, but as Dan has indicated, Barbara, you're already a member of the team. As Dan's executive assistant, and as he told you, she's been immersed in the work of the Civil Aeronautics Board for over a year. And Barbara, the board is getting a new member and an experienced hand at the same time. And that's the best kind of appointment to make. Barbara's appointment brings the CIB back to strength, and it also brings the board back up to a three-member majority of women. Earlier this week, I met with the executive women in government and mentioned that the many talented women in this administration are not getting the public attention they deserve. Some women's groups simply ignore those individuals who are playing important roles throughout the administration. And Barbara, as one would expect of an appointment at this level, brings to her job impressive expertise and credentials. And she reflects the large number of women in this administration who are in positions of responsibility because they're highly qualified individuals, not because of some quota system. Much of the negativity we face has less to do with the number of women appointees than it does with the fact that we have a different political philosophy than those who are doing the complaining. Well, in addition to being professionally qualified, Barbara has been an active Republican for many years and amply reflects the ideals and philosophy of our team. I understand she's been working precincts since she could walk. The outcome of the 1980 election was determined by a basic agreement of the people with the goals that we expressed. And it's important that those filling executive level posts in the departments and agencies agree with why the people sent us here. I know I can count on Barbara to represent us well in the Civil Aeronautics Board and ensure the airline deregulation process is completed and the CAB sunsetted by at least January 1, 1985. Now, I know that Justice O'Connor is here to do the swearing in, so I know we should move on to the main event, Justice O'Connor and Barbara. But before we do, I just can't resist. The other day out in the Rose Garden, I met with the women executives in government, told them a story, and then I met down here, here in the state dining room for a lunch the other day with some American uh, business women, and I told them the same story, and I'm going to tell it to you just because the occasion gives me an excuse and I like to tell the story. <laughs> and it seems there was an accident. The victim was lying out there, crowd had gathered around, a woman was bending over him, and a man rushed in, pushed her aside, and said, I've had training in, in first aid, let me at him. And he got down, and she stepped back meekly and stood there, and he did those things that he'd been taught to do, and at one point she tapped him on the shoulder and said, when you come to the part about sending for the doctor, I'm right here. <laughs> 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 It's a special treat for me today to administer the oath to Barbara, uh, a fellow Arizona. And right after she climbed off the back of the horse, I think we got acquainted. And I've watched the development of her career in Arizona and now in Washington with a great deal of interest. And I'm happy to participate today and would ask you to put your hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, and repeat the oath after me. I, Barbara McConnell, I, Barbara McConnell, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support, that I will support, and defend the Constitution, and defend the Constitution, of the United States, of the United States, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President, Madam Justice, Secretary Dole, and Chairman McKinnon. It is a matter of deep personal pride 
to stand here, a member of a female majority regulatory board, flanked by Madam Justice O'Connor, Secretary Elizabeth Dole, in testament to the understanding and appreciation of our president, to the goals and to the abilities of America's women. I accept the challenge and pledge all my energies, abilities, and efforts toward fulfilling the trust and the faith reposed in me. It is indeed a high honor and a special privilege to serve my country and my president as a member of the Civil Aeronautics Board. This position of responsibility and high government trust fulfills a lifetime goal of helping to shape our government's policies toward an integrated national transportation system. I hope, particularly, to draw upon my years of involvement in the state, local, and federal level to bring a common sense approach to these many difficult issues. For we as, an, as a nation emerge from difficult economic times, our business and industrial base shifts toward a day of new technological advancements. An open and competitive and integrated national transportation system will motivate the United States to reconfirm its world economic leadership. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, I would like to particularly thank the members of my family who are here today, my mother, Betty McConnell, brother, John McConnell, my sister, Jill McConnell, Kazmir Zak, and Patty McConnell, my Aunt Helen Jones as well. Thank you very much all for coming. understand that Commissioner McConnell invites all of you to join her in the rear of the room for a reception. Thank you. What a great pleasure. Just as a pleasure. Kind words, particularly. A great great honor. And you know, it's so nice. Thank you.